This time we're going to address how to create the classroom assessment techniques or CATs for your unit. So these are kind of more uh, cognitivist assessments in nature. They're really getting at the process of learning rather than a product or an observable behavior that the observation checklist is after. So in this one, again, we always start with that same unit that we did the unit summary on. So again, in this example, I'm using this dance unit in which we're teaching the basic uh, locomotor steps, the basic locomotor combinations, some directional spatial concepts, things like that. So I review what the content of my unit is, and then I took, take a look at the list of classroom assessment techniques that I gave you. So this is a series of very uh, formative, definitely formative, and most often informal assessments that will allow us to get a better handle on how our students are grasping the content of the unit. So these are meant to be used to shape our instruction uh, so that we know what we need to review and things like that in class. So what I want you to do for this assignment, for the classroom assessment techniques portion of the assessment inventory, is to choose three of these classroom assessment techniques to use within your unit. So as you scroll through, you can see brief descriptions of what each of these entail. For my unit, I'm going to select just a few really basic ones so I can model for you how this is going to work. So the first one I'm going to choose is right here. It's called the Background Knowledge Probe. So, so a short, simple questionnaire given to students at the start of a course or before the introduction of a new unit lesson or topic. So that's basically just to tell me what they do and don't already know about the content. And you can do this verbally, you can do this written, you can do this um, as a little quiz. Uh, there are all kinds of different options for this, a survey that they could take online. So I'm just going to model for you how you might structure this assignment as you go through it. This is the format I'm going to use. So as always, I'm going to put the type of assessment at the top of my page. And then this one's just a tiny bit different in that we don't really have an assessment instrument per se, although you may hand out a worksheet or something like that for your students. Um, and we're going to group all three of these together and then reflect on them. So a little bit different than we did with the observation checklist, which just had the one checklist and then the reflection. I don't want you to have to reflect on every single one of these little cats because they're really meant to be somewhat small and informal, so the reflections will be similar across the board. All right, so my background knowledge probe. Remember, the first question I have to answer is when. So I'm going to do the background knowledge probe at the beginning of class on the first day of the unit. Or I might even do it at the end of class on the last day of the previous unit if that's possible so I can kind of tailor my unit design to what my students need to know. But there we go, there's a basic answer to the when I'm going to complete this assessment. Now, oops, I got these out of order, didn't I? Why? We'll go here. What? We'll go there. All right, so why am I doing this assessment? Um, this assessment will help me to better understand what my students already know about the concepts in the unit and allow me to tailor my instruction to the students' needs something along those lines. Again, I'm being a little brief here because I'm narrating it for you, so you may want to go into a bit more detail throughout this uh, as you're actually completing the assignment to make sure that you're thorough. Now we go into the what. So I need the specific implementation of this particular background knowledge probe. So we're not talking in generalities here. We're talking about a specific background knowledge probe or other classroom assessment technique that you are going to use in this unit of instruction. I want to be clear about that. So what? What am I going to do to implement this background knowledge probe? There are a couple things I could do. I could give out a survey, I could give out a questionnaire, I could ask students to perform movement. I'm already doing that for my observation checklist, so I don't think I'll do that. 
I think I'll go ahead and start with uh, just open-ended questions that I'm going to ask in class. That's what I'll do for my background knowledge probe for this one. So, at the beginning of class, I will have students sit in a circle and ask the following questions. Look how specific I'm being here, guys. All right, let's bullet this. Number one, what are some basic movements that we perform every day? Okay, so they could ta start talking to me about walking, about bending, about um, skipping, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm looking for is just a basic understanding of how uh, we move our bodies on a daily basis. Then question two could be something like uh, what directions, in which directions, there we go. Sorry English majors, I'll work on my grammar. In which directions can we move our bodies? And I may need to give an example there uh, as we're having the class discussion, but what I'm looking for here is forward, backward, diagonally, etc. What does the term level mean in dance? Let's see if they know that one. And then for question four, I might ask something along the lines of how could we incorporate basic movements, directions, and levels in dance? Or maybe instead of incorporate, I could say, what role do basic movements, directions, and levels play in dance? And we can kind of talk about those being some of the fundamental things uh, that dance is built upon. All right, so we're looking at that when it happens at the beginning of class on the first day of the unit. Why? It's helping me understand what they already know. What? At the beginning of class, I'm having them sit. I'm asking these questions. So really specific there. And if you'll notice, I'm looking at these questions. And now if we go back to my uh, unit summary, I'm just kind of hiding back here, there we go. You'll see I've asked questions about almost everything that's here uh, in my core curriculum. So I, I'm trying to get an accurate picture of where they're starting from, okay? All right. Now, I would go ahead and continue. I've chosen a muddiest point as my second cat, so I would say when in the unit I would do that. I would say why. Let me flip these again so that we're clear what the format is. Why I'm having them do a muddiest point, and I would have then explain exactly what I'm doing for my muddiest point assignment. So typically a muddiest point, we're trying to get at what they don't understand there. Um, so I'm, I'll, I'll typically ask them to do it as an exit slip or something like that. Check your list of classroom assessment techniques. These three that I've selected here may not be appropriate for your content of your unit. So just be aware of that. All right, then I would go down and do my third cat that I've chosen for my unit. That's going to be the minute paper. So at the end of the unit, maybe I would have my students briefly summarize uh, at the very end of class, or even online, I could have them record a response or something like that, um, how they might use uh, the basic locomotor movements, directions, um, levels, things like that in their future dance compositions. So that would get them thinking about future applications of what we've been learning. All right, so that's how I kind of go about formatting my classroom assessment techniques. Then I go in and start reflecting about the reliability, validity, bias, and practicality of all of these. Now, this time I'm not going to model how to actually do that because I want you to start thinking about these uh, in depth on your own. But let's do the gradual release model. So last time I modeled for you exactly what I might write. This time I'm going to talk about some ideas. So with regard to reliability, the nice thing about cats is that I can do several of them throughout the unit, and that would, in theory, give me a more reliable picture of what my students know and are able to do, uh, rather than a single snapshot, which doesn't give me a very reliable picture. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, another reliable thing about it is that these do tend to be anonymous, and so students tend to be a little bit more honest about what they know and don't know, uh, so that's kind of nice.
However, if I ask my students, you know, what was the muddiest point? What didn't you understand? Maybe they don't know what they didn't understand. So that, that makes them, you know, in, in some ways unreliable because I'm kind of depending on my students' metacognition, which may not be extraordinarily accurate. All right, so those are some issues I might consider for reliability. For validity, we're looking at alignment. Now, we already showed that my background knowledge probe is really closely aligned with what my content is for the unit, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. That'll be one of my pros. So the questions I'm asking are, are very closely aligned with what's happening in the unit. Okay. However, uh, my core is particularly interested in, in students being able to demonstrate and perform. And I'm not actually asking them to do that on these. They're more um, basic knowledge questions. And so in that way, they're not super valid. Do you see how that works? So they're targeted at the same information, but they're not at the same level on Bloom's taxonomy. All right, we get into bias. Does anybody have an unfair advantage? Well, everybody's completing these in class, has the same amount of time, has the same resources. So in that way, no, there's no bias. However, I might have some students who need additional time. And for example, completing a minute paper or a muddiest point right at the end of class may not be OK for them. So students with disabilities, um, for example, may need additional time on an assignment like that. And so that could introduce some bias and their voice might not be heard. Last one would be practicality. These are cheap and easy, really easy to implement, so these are going to be very, very practical assessments. My biggest investment of time would be reading through them in the evenings to make sure I know what's going on in my class, and that can be time-consuming, to be perfectly honest, but uh, worth it in my opinion. All right, so that's not an exhaustive discussion of what I might type here, but it certainly gets the ball rolling on what you could be thinking about with regard to these items. So again, for the classroom assessment techniques, you're looking at the list that I've provided you in class. You're choosing three, cat one, cat two, cat three. For each one, you'll say when in the unit, why you're doing it, and what exactly you'll do to implement it. Do the same for the second, do the same for the third. Then you'll reflect on the reliability, validity, bias, and practicality. You do not need an instrument per se for this one unless you're using some kind of table or chart. If that's part of the cat itself, then we will need to see that. But for the most part, these are going to be kind of open-ended questionnaire kind of things. All right, that's how you complete the classroom assessment techniques portion of the assessment inventory assignment.